Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm excited to introduce to you my series of literacy videos, English Reading and Spelling Rules. This program is designed to teach reading and spelling concurrently, enabling you to develop the critical skills necessary to become proficient readers and spellers. Join us on this journey to improve literacy skills and boost confidence in reading and spelling. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a lesson. Let's get started. A base word is a complete English word. A suffix is a letter or letters added to the end of a base word. We code suffixes by circling them. A base word plus a suffix is called a derivative. For example, tip plus suffix s gives us tips. Let's review the suffixes we already know. Consonant suffix s, more than one, cats. I have two cats. S, salad, s, s rose, z, z. N, nine, n. P, pig, p. I, itch, i. I, I, I. T, tomato, t. A, apple, a. A, a, a. Look at my mouth. I'm going to say a sound. You repeat the sound. Name the letter that makes that sound and write the letter. Here we go. Number one. S. S. I. I. T. T. Four, p, p, a, a, n, n, seven, z, s. It's a voiced s sound. Good job. Today, we will learn a new language concept. We have learned that a letter or letters added to the end of a base word is a suffix. And what does constant suffix mean? Right, more than one, as in cats. Now, today we're going to learn a new language concept about words that end in S. Look at the sentences I wrote here on the board. Repeat them with me. I sit. You sit. He sits. We sit. They sit. Every sentence contains a verb. A verb is a word that shows action. What word in these sentences show action? Yes, it's the word sit. Sit is an action verb. An action verb is something that someone um, can do. So sitting is something we can do. So this is verbs right here, sit. Now, in English, did we add suffix s to some of our verbs. Can you see which one we add a suffix s to? 
That's right. He sits. Now, in English, we add suffix s to singular verbs to show presence tense. More specifically, we add it to third person singular. For example, he, she, it, or someone's name. For example, Renee. Renee sits. He sits. She sits. It sits. Or a name like Raimundo sits. So, in English, when you see he, she, it, or a person's name, you're going to put an S at the end of the verb to show presence tense. Today, we're going to code and read some derivatives. Derivatives are a base word plus a suffix. And anytime we see a derivative, we want to circle the suffix. Okay, so we have a suffix here. Let's su circle suffix s. Okay, we know suffix s has two sounds. It can be a s sound or a z sound. So let's look at s. Right before it is a P. What's the sound of P? P. And when you make that sound, it is not vibrating. So we know this S is not going to vibrate. So the sound of this consonant suffix S is S. Okay, let's look at our vowel. Which vowel do we have here? An I. A vowel in a closed syllable is short. Code it with a brief. What is closing that syllable is this consonant because consonants close our mouth. So we know the sound of short I is what? Correct. I. Now we have another S. We always know initial S is pronounced S. So let's read that word. Sips. Very good. Let's go down to the next word. Look at this derivative. It's it has a constant suffix s. Let's circle our suffixes. C suffix s has two sounds. It could be s or z. So let's look at the consonant before it. It's a letter n. Touch your throat. Make the n sound. N. Is it vibrating here? It is. So that means this s is going to vibrate. We're going to hear z. So let's put that voice line. Let's find our vowel. Where's our vowel? I. A vowel in a closed syllable is short. Code it with a brief. It's being closed by that consonant. What's the sound of short I? Correct. I. What's the sound of initial S? S. Read this word. Good. Spins. Let's go to our next word. Looking at our consonant suffix s, we circle suffixes. Looking at the t before it, making the sound of t and touching our throat. Is it vibrating? No. So that means this s is not going to vibrate. And what is that sound going to be? Very good. What's the sound? Oh, excuse me. Let's find our constant, our vowel. A vowel and close a little bit short. Let's code that with a brief. What's the sound of short i? Eh, very good. Let's find our next S. Initial S says what sound? Correct, always. S read that word. Good, spits. And our last word. Circle suffix S. S is going to have two sounds. Let's touch our throat and make the N sound. Mm. Is it vibrating? Yes, it vibrates, so this S is going to vibrate. The sound of this S, I'm putting a voice line, is Z. Vowel is which one? Correct, the A. And remember, we have five vowels so far. We have A, E, I, O, U, and this is a vowel. A vowel in a closed syllable, being closed by that consonant, is short, coded with a brief. Sound of short A, 
ah, very good. Initial S sound, s, very good. Let's read that word. Spans, nice job. We are going to spell today four derivatives. Remember, a derivative is a base word plus a suffix. So we're going to spell four of them today. The very first word we're going to spell is saps. Repeat that word. Let's say it slowly. We're going to make a line for each sound. So let's start with our first sound. What letter is that? S. A. A. P. S. Read that word. Saps. Very good. Let's go on to number two. Our second word is pins. Repeat that word. All right, let's say it slowly. P. I. N. Z. Let's write a letter for each of those sounds we hear. What's a P? P. I. I. N. N. Z. Right, that's our voice S sound. Read that word. Pins, nice job. Two more to go. Our third word is tips. Repeat that word. All right, let's say it slowly and make a line for each sound we hear. T, I, P, S. Okay, what's a T? A T. I. P. P. S. Very nice. Read that word. Tips. And our very last word is tans. Repeat that word. All right, let's say it very slowly, making a line for each sound here. T. A. We heard four sounds. What's our first sound? T. And what letter is that? T. Next sound. A. What letter? Good. Next sound. N. And our last sound is Z. What letter? Right? That's our voiced S sound. That voice S is making a Z sound because a N is vibrating here. Read that word. Tans. Very nice job. Initial means first. Final means last. Medial means anything between initial and final. When a sound is made with an open mouth and the sound is voiced, the letter is a vowel. The vowels are A, E, I, O, U. Consonants are sounds that are closed or partially closed by our tongue, teeth, or lips. A syllable is a word or part of a word with one vowel sound. If a syllable ends with a vowel, it's called an open syllable because vowels are open sounds. If a syllable ends with a consonant, it is called a closed syllable because consonants are closed sounds. A vowel in an open accented syllable is long, coded with a macron. A long vowel sound says its name.
A vowel in a closed syllable is short. Code it with a brief. This is the short vowel sound. Capital I. In English, the word I, meaning myself, is always written with a capital letter, no matter where the word I is found in the sentence. When a syllable is accented, the voice is louder, longer, and stronger. In English, the first syllable is usually accented. English words do not end with I. The asterisk means this is a nonsense word. It is not a real word. The asterisk means this is a nonsense word. It is not a real word. The letter A is in an open, accented syllable. It's long, coded with a macron. This is the long vowel sound. A long vowel sound is the name of the letter. This nonsense word is pronounced pay. When we see two light constants side by side, we mark one out, its sound will hide. We do not pronounce both ends in the word in. Initial S is pronounced S as in sat. S says Z after a short vowel sound as in is. If suffix S follows an unvoiced consonant, the S is unvoiced as in tips. If suffix s follows a voiced consonant, then the s is voiced as in pans. In English, we add s to verbs to show present tense with third person like a he, she, it, or someone's name. Example. He sits, she sits, it sits, or like someone's name, as in Renee sits. Thank you for joining us for this lesson on English reading and spelling rules. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. Don't forget to practice what we covered today to strengthen your reading and writing skills. Remember, each lesson brings us closer to the goal of our becoming proficient readers and writers. So stay motivated and keep practicing. Don't miss our next lesson where we'll continue exploring more important rules and concepts. If you like this video, give it a like and share it with your friends and family. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell to stay updated with all our new lessons. See you in the next lesson. Keep learning and improving every day.